first image is what came out of the camera. The second is what it looks like when I'm done with it. Anybody gone to a Philadelphia flower show? Every year. Yeah, that was, that's where I was forced to head to thinking. What was that? Yeah, that was actually a couple years ago.
you. Okay. Thank you. So obviously, see, there's a lot you can do after you take the picture, and and you can you can make something out of. Now, most of my images, if you look at them, there's only one place to look. There's not a lot of stuff in there. There's one subject, and that's it. Right. That's one of the things I always teach. If you're going to compete, don't make it confusing for the judge to look at the picture. It's there. That's it. That's what you, where you should be looking. Do the backgrounds matter? Absolutely matter. They have to. They can. Don't make them be in conflict with your subject, and keep the color in harmony. So there's a lot of things that it's it's not rocket science. Believe me, uh, it's it's easy to enhance. If you can work in Photoshop, you can you can do any of this stuff. Okay. Uh, you want to talk about yeah. the pictures first? Yeah, I, I, we'll take, right? we'll, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll do that. If you have to pick a number out of the top of your head, I know it's going to be different for each one, but on, on average, how long do you spend on each picture? I'm going to tell you, it's, yeah. it's been know, as, as little as maybe 10 minutes <laughs> to 30 hours. Okay? And and I say 30 hours, not a, yeah, you know, I'll work on it. I have, there are some images I have 30 variations, and finally I'll get to a point and I'll say, stop. Stop, you know, pick one, and, and that's, it's over, you know. Because sometimes I may have three, in fact, I have a folder right now in my computer for next year's print competition, which comes up in uh, April of, of this following year. And I just keep throwing stuff in there. And I'll go back and I have to weed down. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. if, if you can put four and you only have three and you can't come up with the fourth one, that's not a good thing. So all... As soon as the year ends, I start the next year and I keep throwing stuff in that folder. And I'll have two, three, four variations. Sometimes I'll combine them even and, and then go from there. Sometimes it's real easy. I, I have an image, yes. Is any of these images your competition work? And some of these are, actually. Uh, this I just did, this I just did, this I just did. This I'm going to use. We have like a, a, a little local competition. I'm going to put this in. Because he, uh, Marty's a good friend of mine, and uh, he's a photographer, and he, I actually gave him this print. We had a, a lighting workshop that we did together, and that, if you remember when he came up, he was standing in his front doorway. I said, Marty, don't move. The background sucked, but the light was beautiful. He's got what they call short light on his face. So you have shadow and highlight, and you have highlight in his cheek, which is what you try and create in the studio. I said, you got beautiful light on, don't move, I can take you out of the picture later, I can give you a new background, I don't worry about that. And, and then after I said, you know what, this is a good black and white. So, those are the things I look for when I'm doing a portrait. This was actually done, it was either a hotel room or her bedroom, uh, the bride's bedroom, and it was a wall like that. Mm -hmm. I, and I get walls that are even wall. color, you know, no pictures hanging on, and if there is a picture, I'll always ask, can I take that down? If they say no, I know I can take it out later. But to lift it off the wall and save me some work later, I'll do that. And I just pulled the chair over and said, just lay on the chair like that. She did it. Boom. And then I, I did this to the background later. Okay. This, you saw the, the snapshot mm -hmm. when it came up. Mm -hmm. It was her birthday party. She loves Elmo. But somebody said, well, where'd you leave that big Elmo button on there? I said, because it means it's something great, to her. Yeah. It becomes a, there's, she has a personal attachment to this. When she gets older, it's going to mean something. To take that off now, would I put it in competition? No, no. because the judges hate that. Mm -hmm. But that's why I said before, it's who it's for. what race are you in? It's you and Keep the Elmo and get rid of the kid. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> I know so some that, that was just a snapshot. And if anybody knows, has done any portrait lighting, you know, shooting stuff with on-camera flash is not the way to go. So what I did was, these little white highlights are right, they're called catch lights for people that aren't portrait people. Mm -hmm. What I did is took the flash and I bounced it off the wall so it came from a 45 degree angle to her face. So I got good light on her face, but the background again sucked. Uh, so I know I could fix that later and that's what I ended up with. And then I kind of used some smudge tools. That's what I use a lot in Photoshop, the smudge brush for the background. And I smudge things. A texture one, so a texture one which is one of their standard brushes in there. It's, it's not just a round brush. It's got a couple little things. If you drag it out, it'll pull some parts out and leave others on. I use that brush a lot, and then vary the size of it, or the, and the opacity too. Play around. Those things you've got to play with yourself. You know the opacity and how big the brush should be. That you're going to have to get a feel for because I, I'm back and forth all over the place with mm -hmm. that. This was another uh, a bright portrait. Again, the background was really bad. I just took it out and, and, and played around with the colors. 
Um, same thing here. This was like probably an off, off beige color wall or something. I thought the black and white was appropriate for that image. That was the bird. Um, we got two more minutes to talk about her? Or? Okay. I'm going to go back 40 years ago. I had a, a big health problem. I had to have surgery. I came home. I couldn't do anything. I was going out of my mind. I put a feeder out on my deck of my house and set up my tripod with my 400 millimeter lens. Shot loads of bird pictures. What I did was I put a branch about three feet away from the feeder. So they kind of had to land there first. <laughs> and they always did. And I just kept shooting and shooting. And just, I had to slide and go out the last door open. It was cold. Open this wide and just kept shooting and shooting and shooting. And it, and it was snowing. And at first I left it in. I said, I got to take the snow out. And then the background I played around with. I use, uh, again, the smudge tool a lot. Now, depending on how you use it, you can go around circles, you can go, this I went like crisscross, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's time consuming. It's not a one-click thing, not a one-click wonder where it's a filter and you apply it. No. I don't. Now, do I use filters? Yes, but I'll use them and then just mask them in certain places. I don't use them on a whole image. Rarely ever do that. So this took, this took time because it took all the snow out. The bird had snow on, took the snow off the bird. Actually, had to sharpen them up a little bit, and this this image did well. In the By the way, Steve also printed all the. Yeah, these are all done on Epson 3800. I can print up to 17 by 22 or 25, something like that. Um, the glossy papers; these are all sprayed with a uh, UV protector, um, to, and it, it helps with the fingerprints and stuff. But it it also has a UV inhibitor in it, so it helps them not fade over time. Where do you get that? Um, you know what? Give me your email before I leave, and anything I can't answer right now, I'll, I'll send you the information. Mm -hmm. okay. it, the can, it's not cheap. It's like $18 for yeah, canned 18, stuff, but if you're doing this stuff, you definitely want to spray your printer. Yeah, you most know? of the federal places. The company that I use for the, for the luster paper is called Red River. Oh. Uh, I've had contact with Red River at Photo Plus Expo. They're sending me a, a whole there's, set of paper, sample papers pa for everybody. There's a to ton of paper companies. In January. Now, I'm not saying any one is better than the other, but for the luster paper, it's inexpensive. And when I print it out, it looks like what I see on my monitor, and I don't have issues with blacks and things like that. It's doing the job. Do you use a spider for color band trick? I have a I1 an older i1 color match mm -hmm. it's i probably should get the newer one oh i'm going to talk about that what kind of monitor is it a dell monitor it's which i'm going to change which i'm going to i'm going to it actually it's a 23 inch dell and i've never had problems with it it's it been calibrated and it, what comes out of my printer looks like what's on that monitor but is it an led is it one of the no LED? it's not a, it's it's probably four years old LCD. A, is it? There's a company called ASUS. 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 Yeah. Did you, does that make a shutter bug here? They have a write-up. Uh, I have yeah. it with me. I bought it just for that reason on a it's monitor. Four hundred and sixty-nine dollars at B and H. It got yes. fantastic reviews. Now, anybody who's been doing this knows that IGL and the C and all those other companies they have great monitors if you want to spend two grand, which I really couldn't. For the amount of printing I do, I couldn't justify that, but I am going to buy that monitor. It got great reviews. Uh, this was a setup I did with studio lights when I was sick at that time. Another thing I did, you know, when, when, when you're first faced with personal challenges, you got to find a way around. I, I, always, I, I always said it's easy to, to do well when things are going well. It's tough to do them when you have a problem. So, being a photographer, I couldn't just sit and do nothing. I had to shoot. So I, I set this up. My wife had this arrangement sitting as you walked in my door every day. Every day it was there. That's the other thing I, I talk about. So you're saying when, you, when you're having problems, you should shoot yourself? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> just use blanks. It works better. Uh, we become numb to things we see every day. Mm -hmm. It's easy to go on a trip and see new things that, like your eyes like, man, that's great, that's great. 
I walk things past in my house. Like this has been sitting in my front entrance way. I can't tell you how many years. This is great subject. This printed great competition. So you got to. I guess you got to change the way you look at things. Especially photographers usually do. In fact, look at things totally different from most people. Because I'm always looking for stuff. In fact, we'll go out to dinner and I'm sitting in a restaurant and somebody's by a window and I'll say something to my wife. My wife says, don't you ever stop. <laughs> I said, no. I, it's just inherent. I see light on somebody's face. Oh my God, I wish I had a camera. You know? So no, it, I don't stop. I think the important thing is isolate detail. Absolutely. And put it in a different Absolutely. Look, I mean, spend, well, portraits are easy to isolate detail. But even flowers... This, I just went to, you know, everybody know where Alaire State Park is? Oh, yeah. 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 I live 15 minutes from Alaire State Park. Here's another crazy thing. We had arranged an outing for our group, and I was supposed to lead the group because I'm so close, close to Alaire. So that morning, I go over to Alaire, I get a phone call from another gentleman who was supposed to meet me there. He said, Steve, is it raining? I said, it's, yeah, it's drizzling. I said, it's not bad. Actually, photography-wise, it's good. I said, look, Michael, if you don't want to drive down here, I said, I can understand that. He's like an hour away. I said, look, I'll wait here. If anybody shows up, they show up. Nobody showed up. They get, These people are photographers. What's wrong with them? Mm -hmm. I walked around in an hour. I got so many pictures. <laughs> this, the leaf was one in the background I made in Photoshop. I have so many pictures that I can work on from that day from, with raindrops dripping off leaves and artistic stuff. You know, not, not, not client stuff. stuff Stuff that feeds my, my artistic side. So I even even a bunch of photographers, I said, they missed the boat. When you do a wedding shot, <clears throat> what percentage of the images do you give the, 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 the special treatment? Uh, oh, that's a good do question. Too many. No, no. I go you through like the, afford to. the poor, like, I'll tell you where 90% of my effort goes into the pictures of the bride at the house. There's reason for that. Mm -hmm. I'm in control of it. Once she leaves that house, she's at the church, I'm not in control no more. I can't, I can't go up and say, can you turn this way a little bit? I can't, you can't do that. You're, you have to take and move yourself yeah. around. Some churches you tell you, stand here, don't move. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now my hands are tied. I, they just tied my hands. I always like to get to the side of the bride and wait for her to, with that expression, if some, a word is said and a tear... The, the emotional pictures. Mm -hmm. But if, if the, the, the minister or the priest says, you can't move, I can't mm -hmm. move. So I'm not in control. I know I'm in control of the house. I can put her where the light is good. I can put her where the background is good. And then I also do the PJ stuff and just wait in the background and, let, and I see her chit-chatting with the mother or something and get the stuff technically not perfect, but guess what? Emotional pictures sell. Mm -hmm. So you got to get that stuff too. You got, if you've been in that business long enough, you know that it's not just the portraits, it's not just the candidates, it's not just the PJ, it's everything. So you got to have an open eye for that. But I know at the house I'm in total control. Mm -hmm. So after I leave the house, it's pretty much bang, 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 bang. You go to the park, kind of back in control, you get to the reception, you're not in control again. Mm -hmm. Now it's party time. Yeah. So most of my work is on the images of the bride at the house, like this kind of stuff, mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, the formal stuff, which was kind of falling out of favor a little bit, you know how things evolve and it, PJ became the thing to do and, and documentation was... You wanted to find a PJ, it's not a pajama image. Uh, <laughs> uh, photojournalistic images. Yeah, photo, I'm, I'm using terms that maybe you're not, yeah. But photojournalistic images were the rave for a while, document, documentary where you stand back and you don't get involved at all. But I think you gotta do it all. You gotta, you gotta be good at it all. Um, Does that mean you don't have favorites? Dark. What's that? Does that mean you don't have favorites? Uh, I love doing portraits. I, I love doing this kind of stuff. I do have favorites. Like I love to, yeah, I love doing that. Like my, my granddaughter, I love doing that stuff. I do. But uh, I'll do the other stuff too. In fact, I this past wedding last week, she was in a room that had like double doors and there was like shears over them. Mm -hmm. And I, and I stepped outside, and she was in there talking to her mother. I shot through the shears. Real, and then I added grain later to make it even more artsy looking. Phenomenal image. Is it a portrait? No. No, but it's, it's got such emotional impact that it's going to be a great image that I know she's going to love. But I, do, I try and do a little bit of everything if I can. Okay, let's okay. take a little break now.